Bismillahirrahmanirrahim In the last lecture we learned about some basics about uh, variable length codes and what is the requirement uh, of unique code now we are going to uh, learn what is prefix code consider this code one zero 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 one one and one one zero as you can see that the code word one one is also the beginning of the code word one one or in other words one one is prefix of one one zero although the code is unique the receiver has to wait to get all the bits and to understand whether the transmitted code was 11 or 110 since there are two codes one code is 11 and the other code is 110 the decoder doesn't know whether if it receives only 11 then it doesn't know whether the transmitted code was 11 or 110 so it has to wait until the next bit is received if it receives 0 together after 11 then it will understand the code is 110 but if it it receives uh, 11 and then receives two zeros or some other code then it will know that it is uh, some uh, it was 11 for example 0010111 and 110 is a set of code words 00 is immediately decodable because there is no other code word in the set which starts with 00. As you can see, there is no other code word which it starts with 00. So whenever it receives two zeros, one after the other, the co decoder knows that it is 00. One zero is also immediately decodable the for the same reason there is it's not prefix of any other code word one zero is not in the beginning of any other code word <coughs> but one one cannot be decoded just after <coughs> just after just after receiving uh, one one because it can be one one or one one zero the receiver has to wait for the next bit to receive to know whether one one was transmitted or one one zero now consider code 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 1. As you can see, no code word is in the beginning of any other code word. In other words, it is a prefix free code. As you can see, this 0 is whenever it receives just one zero, it knows that it is 0 and it cannot be miscoded by any other code word or it doesn't need to wait for the to receive the next bit to understand whether it is zero or what similarly one zero is not in the beginning of any other code word and one one zero is not also not in the beginning of any other code word so this is a prefix free code this code is not only unique but can be decoded instantaneously as well so we have to understand there are two uh, characteristics of a variable length code one is that it should be unique the other one is that it should be instantaneously decodable if any variable length code has got both these characteristics then it is called a prefix code a prefix code is the code which is unique and instantaneously decodable now question is that how do we get a prefix code how do we make sure that code which we have generated is a prefix free code a prefix code or prefix free code with code word lengths n1 n2 nl exists and if and only if this condition is met what that condition is that summation k is equal to 1 to l 2 raised power n minus my uh, 2 raised power minus nk is less than or equal to 1 where n is the number of bits in kth code word let's test both VLC 1 and VLC 2 with craft inequality VLC 1 and VLC 2 we have seen before
this is VLC 1 and this is VLC 2 this is variable length code 1 and this is variable length code 2 now for VLC 1 2 raised power minus 2 plus 2 raised, raised to the power minus 3 plus 2 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 raised to power minus 4 and plus 2 raised to power minus 4 this minus 4 minus 3 is just the number of bits in that VLC code as you can see how many VLC how many bits uh, this uh, no, terms over we have over here 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 we have 8 code words over here and minus 2 for this a where we have two number of bits minus 3 for these codes and minus 4 for these codes so what we get is if we calculate it then what we get is 1 so for VLC 1 which in which we have got uh, 18 bits for the uh, if we encode a bad cab the uh, this code satisfies craft inequality now let's examine VLC 2 2 raised power minus 1 plus 2 raised to the power minus 1 plus 2 raised to the power minus 2 plus 2 raised to the power minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 minus 3 minus 3 it is the same way minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 for all these codes and minus 3 for these two so minus 3 minus 3 if we calculate it then what we get is 2.25 which is not less than 1 so it means this code word does not satisfy craft inequality however if we code the same sentence a bad cab using this VLC2 code we can encode it in into in only 9 bits but as we have discussed that uh, just reducing the number of bits is not the only goal the decoding or the correct decoding and easy decoding is also an, a, an important aspect of uh, source coding so this VLC2 code uh, although looks very efficient in terms of number of bits it is not a good code word a good code word is VLC1 which that is which uh, not only reduce reduces the number of bits but it it is also a prefix free code a unique code may not be instantaneously decodable but an instantaneously decodable code is always unique what it says for example if we have developed a code word which is unique but we have to check whether it is instantaneously decodable or not in other words we have to check the in uh, crafts inequality or uh, it to make sure that it is a prefix free code but if a code is instantaneously decodable then it must be a unique because without being a unique a code can never be instantaneously decodable so if it does, uh, somebody tells you that it is an instantaneously decodable code it means it is a unique code as well but if somebody tells you it's a unique code then it is not necessary that it is an instantaneously decodable code as well if we know that a code is not uniquely decodable then it means it is not instantaneously decodable as well on the other hand, if, if, uh, if we know that a code is not a unique code, then we don't need to check whether it is a in, whether it is instantaneously decodable or not. Because if a code is not unique, then it can never be an instant instantaneously decodable code, for sure. Now, average number of bits. Average number of bits for a set of code words is defined as what is a set of code word? this is a set of code words for these eight letters this is a set of code words or this is a set of code words so as as you can see in variable length code not uh, the total number of bits is not same for all the letters so we have to understand the average number of bits in a code word set so this can easily be calculated as 
r bar is equal to k summation k is equal to 1 to l n x of k into p x of k where n is the number of bits for a symbol x and p is the probability of that symbol x so we just simply multiply the number of bits with its given probability then we can calculate average number of bits in a set of code words it is also called expected code le length of coding now what is source coding theorem we have so far understood all the understood all the terminologies and terms which are used in uh, uh, source coding the basics of uh, source coding now we have to establish the source coding theorem for any prefix code used to represent the symbols from a source the minimum number of bits required to represent the source symbols on average must be equal to entropy of the source first of all we have to determine how many what uh, how much we can reduce the source we know that we can compress it but there must be a limit of compression as we have seen in uh, VLC 1 and VLC 2 case in VLC 2 case we although we reduce the number of bits to 9 but we, this is not a valid code word because it, it, because it is it can never be it cannot be uh, decoded easily so it is not a valid code word so valid code word means which can which is prefix free code and uh, so uh, having this uh, limitation or this uh, 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 condition that no minimum number of bits required to represent a source sim uh, represent the source symbols is equal to the entropy of the source so entropy plays we have learned what is entropy now entropy plays an important role in th source coding theorem source in source coding theorem entropy is the limit of number of minimum number of bits required to represent a source symbol the above statement tell that if we have found a prefix code that satisfies the equation one this is this equation we must abandon further research because we cannot do any be better what it says that for example if you have found average bits of length in a set of code words what is r bar it is simply the average length of uh, bits in a source uh, code word set or source code symbols for example as we have seen over here this is the average length what will be the average length whatever the probability of 0 multiplied by its number of bits that is 1 then whatever the probability of 1 0 it is multiplied by 2 then whatever the probability of uh, 1 1 0 it is multiplied by 3 and uh, whatever the probability of 1 1 1 it is multiplied by 3 again and whatever we the result we get that is the average uh, uh, bits number of bits in the source code suppose here we have maximum 3 and, s and minimum 1 we assume that the average code word length is 2 we are just assuming I have not calculated I am just assuming it is 2 uh, because we have not we don't know the probability of these code words but we are assuming it is 2 then in that case if it is 2 and the entropy calculated for the say this uh, code word is uh, suppose it is uh, uh, 1.5 then it is greater than entropy so this is uh, and it but it must be less than entropy plus 1 for example it is 1.5 then it is 1.1.5 plus 1 is equal to 2.5 so if it is in between the between 1.5 and 2.5 then this code word is valid uh, this uh, number of bits is uh, valid range it is in the valid range but it can never be more than uh, more than this limit h plus x it means the maximum number can never be the maximum number of bits can never be more than 2.5 if we will try to reduce it uh, bef uh, less than 1.5 we cannot achieve it so efficiency is entropy divided by average number of bits in a set of code words example consider a source which generates four symbols with probabilities p of x1 is equal to 0.5 p of x2 is equal to 0.3 p of x3 is equal to 0.1 and p of x4 is equal to 0.1 then let's calculate entropy the result of this 
calculation is 1.685 as you can see we have just multiplied the probability with its log base 2 0.3 is multiplied by its log base 2 and sim the same way we have calculated all the uh, logarithms and then we have added the terms to get 1.685 suppose we use prefix code now for this same uh, probabilities we have generated a prefix code which is x1 is equal to 0 x2 is equal to 1 0 x3 is equal to 1 1 0 and x4 is equal to 1 1 1 as you can see this is the same as the uh, set of code words which we have seen before so if we calculate the average uh, number of bits for that one give with uh, against this these given probabilities then it is average number of bits is 1.7 so as we can see that this 1.7 is greater than 1.685 what it says that you cannot achieve any better efficiency better uh, compression than uh, if you try to number uh, reduce the number of bits less than 1.685 you cannot reduce it you cannot go uh, below 1.685 number of bits in a average uh, if uh, average source code average uh, length of source codes so what is the efficiency of this one it is efficiency is 0 0.9912 as we ca can see that we have by uh, generating this kind of prefix code we are almost touching the limit because 1.7 is uh, the percentage is uh, point the ratio is 0 0.9912 or in terms of percentage the efficiency is 99.12 percent Now, types of source coding, lossless source coding and lossy source coding. In lossless source coding, there is no loss of information. Example of lossless source codings are compress and uncompress uh, utilities in Linux or Unix and WinZip in Windows. For lossy source coding with loss of information for example jpeg and mpeg etc these are uh, lossy type of source coding methods huffman coding so far we have learned what is source coding and its parameters now we will learn source coding methods there are two most important and popular source co coding methods huffman coding and lampel zip coding Huffman coding Huffman suggests a source coding method in 1952 based on probabilities of source symbols this method is optimal in the sense that the average number of bits it requires to represent the source symbols is minimum and also meets the prefix condition one more important condition for Huffman code is that there must be more than one mini maximum length code word. For example, 01011 1 can be a Huffman code because there are two code words of maximum length 2, 10 and 11. And they differ only in last bit. But 00010 0, 0, and 110 is not a valid Huffman code because there is only one code word of maximum length 3, that is 110. So Huffman coding is an example of lossless coding. 